morning everyone thanks for joining me um i'm looking in the comment section to see who's hopping on let me know where you're watching from but um i'd like to know there's probably a lot of you out there that own a skin classic or similar device and we do get clients that have melasma come through our doors how many of you out there see and treat melasma clients not with your skin classic, but in other ways. So today's topic is for those who have a skin classic. I really need to uh, make sure that you do not use your skin classic for melasma. So I'm here today to show you some differences in hyperpigmentation. That's a blanket word in our industry. And this is something that we will not treat with the skin classic, but we'll go into other treatments available because even as the skincare professional, you need to be able to offer your clients some solution to their problem or at least a referral to someone else too. So we need to get these um, ideas out to our clients. Hey, Brenda and Mercy, good morning, good morning. And if you have a skin classic, give me a heart or a thumbs up so I know you're out there. Um, and for those of you that don't know me, I'm Stephanie Halvick. I'm a registered nurse, owner of RN Faces, the Skin Classic, and my office here in Cape Charles. And I have been using this technology since 2005. And it is one of the best pieces of equipment right there, my little baby, but it's not good for melasma. So I want to show you um, how to decipher between melasma and brown spots. Also, I'll show you what can happen if you entertain the thought of treating clients with melasma. And uh, hey, Desiree and Brina, awesome. And um, okay, also, I have this slideshow that I'll be showing you. If you want the slideshow today, please, in the comments, the word melasma, and you will get the slides sent to your um, inbox. So, um, and the reason I think it's important to get the slideshow, because if you're going to educate your clients that have melasma, maybe you're watching one, maybe you could be some of my clients that have melasma, and you're watching along, you may find a good modality that will work for you and your melasma. Um, I'm not the authority on, my, on melasma, but I am the authority on the Skin Classic and what you should not do with it. And that's the thrust of my broadcast today. Hey, Brina and Rebecca. And uh, Rebecca, make sure you spell melasma correctly. I saw an I in there. My automated system won't recognize it. Um, so yes, I'd love to see you all get this um, slideshow. And you can make up your own slideshow for your clients or take some of the pictures. There's going to be video available in here, links and everything. So definitely you'll want to download this. Um, let me kind of get started here. Now, what you're seeing right here is melasma under the derm light. And you know how I feel about my derm light. I love it. And it will help us in um, viewing what melasma looks like on your clients. But I have um, kind of like a guest. Uh, Dr. Chasen, he owns two med spas in New Jersey, and he has two skin classics. Him and his staff would not even dream of using the Skin Classic for melasma. Um, I do have a quick video that I really would like for you to listen to. He really breaks everything down very well. And he has one of the top ways to um, alleviate uh, the melasma. And Mercy, if you ever have anybody that has melasma, you would be fairly close to Dr. Chasen in New Jersey. So I am going to play this and let you listen, and then we'll move on with our slides because this will break down a lot of melasma questions.
I am Dr. Mitch Chasen, Medical Director of Reflection and a 20-year veteran in the field of cosmetic medicine. Today we're going to be talking about a really troublesome condition called melasma. Watch him. So what is melasma? How do you know if you have melasma? Melasma is a condition whereby mostly females notice brown patches in their skin and kind of a dirty complexion to the skin. We don't actually, we don't actually know, know what causes, causes it, but we know it's related to female, female hormones in some, some way. As many women notice that they develop it after pregnancy, sometimes associated with birth control pill, and even in vitro. The cure for melasma has been very elusive. It's very difficult to treat it, cure it, and prevent it from coming back. Very commonly, we see patients that come into the office and it's misdiagnosed by different non-cosmetic physicians or in spas. Very often, it's treated as a sunspot. And if you treat melasma as sunspots, not only may it not improve, you actually may worsen it. So it's not uncommon that patients will come in and have had IPLs and deep peels and other kinds of treatments, and now these brown patches are even worse. What we're going to be talking about today is an innovative treatment for melasma, transisemic acid. Transisemic acid, is a medicine that's used for heavy menstrual bleeding. Well, in Europe, they noticed many years ago that some women that were treated with oral transgenic acid were actually noticing improvement in their skin, in their melasma. So the newest thing in melasma therapy is actually taking transgenic acid and injecting it directly into the skin where the problem exists. There have been many studies about the use of transgenic acid injected directly into the skin. And unfortunately, the results were not predictable. And it's been determined the reason is you need to get that transamatic acid at a specific depth using a specific amount. So what's new in our field now is using a computerized delivery system, a system that can deliver an exact amount of transamatic acid to an exact depth. And that has changed the playing field. And we're now seeing great results with injectable products to improve this troublesome condition. But with melasma, it's not a one-size-fits-all treatment. We use many different technologies and topical agents to treat this troublesome condition. And transamatic acid is just the newest in this arsenal. We decided to get the best treatment for melasma. We take many things into account. The color of the skin, the depth of the melasma. Is it epidermal on the top surface or is it dermal? Is the patient sensitive to specific medicines like vitamin C or retinol? What, what have they tried? tried? What, what has worked? What has worked? What, 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 what time of year is it? And what medicines are they taking currently? Are they have any underlying health conditions? So it's very, very important to take a very detailed history and do a good physical exam. And it's very important to see physicians who are experienced in treating melasma. We look forward to seeing you in the office. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And we love to hear your comments. Okay, so I really, really like Dr. Chasen's um, presentation there. I think it was very concise and um, very easy to understand. Let me just move on here. So there we go. Wait a minute. I, I am Dr. Mitch Chasen, medical director. There we go. Okay, so um, huh, there we go. Um, so I think, he, yeah, his presentation was really good. That is one of a groundbreaking type of treatment. So he does that in his two med spas in New Jersey. I'm sure other people do it too, but we're going to talk about some other treatments as well. Hey, good morning, everybody. Yes. And for those of you that don't know, um, what's going on today, we're talking about melasma. If you want these slides, simply put the word melasma next to your name. Now, if you're watching on another platform like LinkedIn, um, my my personal page, um, then please hop over to my business page because that's the only way that you can get the slides is if you do that. So we're going to learn to decipher and detect melanoma, uh, 
melasma in the treatment room and why it's important to examine your client's skin, right? And why heat related treatments like the Skin Classic are contraindicated. And we can also learn through dermoscopy with the derm light um, how you can maybe make a decision whether your client has melasma. There are lots of ways for us to go about it, but you know, it is uh, one of those very um, elusive, like Dr. Chasen said, it's not always um, cut and, and dry. Like you don't, you always might be second guessing yourself. So in our world, if we have to second guess ourselves, then we second guess ourselves and probably wouldn't treat. But here's a good reason for um, melasma and things that um, can make it a little better, but the sun exposure we know is awful. Uh, medication sometimes will do it, genetics, hormones, people that are pregnant, and perhaps a lot of screen time, video time, uh, laptop time, the blue light that emits through um, our devices can also aggravate your melasma. Of course, we know that all of our melasma clients need to wear sunblock and some of them are using topical medications and some cosmetic procedures. And we'll get into some of those, but um, it's getting close to summer and we'll be seeing a lot more melasma very easily. But sometimes in the winter, it may not be as easy to detect because they have been covered up there. It, it waxes and wanes. So it'll be very prominent in the summer during the heat of the summer. So um, you'll, you'll be able to spot it a mile away. And again, these are some slides that you might want to uh, share with your clients. And these are different triggers for melasma, just to keep that in, the, in your mind when you are doing a consultation. Um, let's get to, you'll have some, you, you heard Dr. Jason say there's a few different types of melasma. Some is very epidermal, then we have a dermal melasma, and then there's a mixed dermal and epidermal. There are a few different ways to go about looking um, and examining your client. The Woods Lamp, which I think many of you have out there, but I've been in so many offices really that don't use them much anymore. But if you um, have a Skin Classic and you definitely have a derm light, so that will be really critical. But if you don't have a um, derm light or even a Skin Classic, the Woods Lamp is a very good um, show and tell for your client. And that may be something that you might need to tell them. You know, there are other procedures like IPL or other lasers that produce heat. And if you use those modalities in your office, you too must be super careful on who you select for this procedure, whether it be laser or Skin Classic. Um, so you want to uh, grab that Woods lamp if you don't have a derm light and get it out and start using it. Um, I have a great read for you. So if you're getting the slideshow, when you pull up this one, there will be a link. Um, Jessica Slora, one of our very talented Skin Classic providers in Utah, wrote this great article from in Dermoscope. So it's, she talks all about the melasma and pregnancy. I think it's a terrific read. I wanted to throw this in there to round out the, um, the slideshow for you. And again, feel free to share this with your clients. Oh, my pick frame. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, thanks for letting me know. There we go. Um, and thanks for telling me that. And so as we go, so make sure that you stop and read this. All you'll have to do is click on the, the picture and you will see that uh, article pop up out of Dermoscope magazine. Oop. Okay, so let's do this. Hopefully, everyone here who's watching that is a skin skincare professional somewhere on your intake form, you have the question, have you ever had melasma or the mask of 
pregnancy. And I like to say the mask of pregnancy because sometimes people don't know what melasma is or uh, the butterfly rash, they may call it. But you need to have this on your form. If you're getting the slideshow sent to you, you will get the link where you see my complete intake form because that's where you want to start. The client may not tell you that they've ever had melasma and maybe it's the winter and their melasma is under control. So you want to make sure that you ask them and, um, and go from there. And then upon your physical exam on your client's skin, you can get more information. But this would be the very first thing that I would want to know. Also, um, for those of you that are many Skin Classic providers out there, on my intake form, I have this. Minor skin imperfections that you would like treated. So I have a list of everything that I treat. And once the clients start to check the boxes, then I have carte blanche and can speak freely about their skin tags or their keratosis or their broken capillaries without embarrassing them. So this, this um, form you'll get along in this slideshow as well. And okay, terrific. Oh my gosh, we have Shem Shamima all the way from Botswana. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder what time it is there. Um, anyway, so it's very important to get this onto your, your form so that you can start uh, the conversation, whether it's about melasma or all of these other irregularities. And so when we're looking at melasma, there's it looks so different on other people, but you can see the discoloration in the skin. So I like to be clear, when we're treating clients with the Skin Classic, we are treating sun spots. We're not treating a swath of brown, any big area. We want to make sure that we're only working with brown spots. But I want you to see on the right hand side, you can see it's a little, the, the picture is a little fuzzy, but you can see all of that diffuse brownness. And then the picture on the left, you see a couple brown spots. Well, even though the client might say, well, I know I have melasma, but I just want these two little spots gone. You don't want to treat them. Their melasma is networked all through their skin. Now, if they have some skin tags on the neck, generally I say it's fine. I've done that and it doesn't usually impact there. But um, if I was a little concerned, maybe I would do two, see how they are when they come back. But don't entertain doing even those little spots because it will be a disaster. And I'll show you what, the, what I mean by that in a few more slides up. So be on the lookout for brown swathy skin it can this was obvious to me it might not be super obvious to some and um but the more you start looking at melasma pictures the more it will be on the top of your mind when you're looking at your clients So I guess you would all say that this was pretty obvious, right? So uh, a very obvious um, patchy, patchwork, but look, I, I do wanna make myself small again here. Okay, so if you look up at her forehead, it's not as obvious, right? Very obvious on her cheeks. But when you go up to the forehead, you could see how the swath of brown goes out on either side and that's, that's like a little vague, but the cheeks itself, the nose are something even above the lip, something that really stands out to you. And if the nice client said, well, I just don't like these little brown spots under my eyebrow, that too is melasma. If you have a melasma client, refrain from doing any heat related um, procedures like Skin Classic or uh, IPL, any heated laser that is not directly um, indicated for um, melasma. So that's a very obvious uh, photo, I think. So think of the swaths. Now, there are times when 
Uh, let me do this. When there's a mixed bag, right? Um, so the client might have, you could see the swath of melasma, but they might have a keratosis under their eye and they have a couple flat spots. Well, I wouldn't treat any of these on my melasma client. And you might think, well, maybe the keratosis would be okay. Maybe, but I'm not going to take that chance because when you see what heat will do to melasma, you too will not use this device to help your clients with melasma or a broken capillary or anything on the face. Even milia is something that I refrain from treating with the skin classic on my melasma clients. And I know that's a tough thing, but now there's other opportunities to help with melasma. I mean, with um, milia. So, um, and even uh, like cryotherapy, you would not want to do on a client with melasma because that goes deeper into it and it, it can kind of give that thermal burn. So uh, I wouldn't do that as well. So um, in our in our group, you know, thermolysis skincare for estheticians, we have lots of providers and of Skin Classic. And when they have a question, they'll typically take some pictures, take a picture with their derm light and ask opinion in the in the crowd. And we have so many great providers in there that that happily uh, give their opinion and uh, maybe even their experience with this. So um, here we have a gal that does have melasma. Now, I do want to shrink myself again because I think when you see the pictures a little bigger, it's easier to see. You can see the discoloration in her skin and look at the forehead, look at the swath of brown. And then when she took her picture with the derm light, that is more red in there. And again, all of you that are treating, say, flat hyperpigmentation, like spots on the hands, I had a terrific spot treated three weeks ago when I did a skin classic training here with Jill Cuff and Rhonda McNally from North Carolina, they treated my brown spot and it's all gone. So, but that was flat hyperpigmentation. We don't treat anything that looks reddish. You can't tell that that looks too red under the skin unless you get that derm light picture. I have one of those brown spots that has a lot of redness in it. It's not melasma, but it's sun damage. And this is not appropriate for the skin classic. It just will not be strong enough to actually do anything to the capillaries under the skin. So this was great. She got the opinion and she did not treat this client um, with melasma which I am very grateful for. Um, again, a very um, dramatic and obvious melasma client right there. Uh, you would not treat. And even if you were thinking to yourself or you didn't think it was melasma, you wouldn't treat anything bigger than the size of an eraser head. Look how large they are. But I guarantee if a derm light was put on that, you would see the redness below. So when you see these larger swaths, that should ring a bell in your head to take pause and look at their skin a little bit more and see if you think they have melasma. And if they do, saying no to a client might be something we don't like to do. But believe me, you need to learn to say no, but then give them options as well. So that would be um, something that you need to learn to do. Um, this was from one of our posts in, in the group. Um, they wanted to know they had sebaceous hyperplasia and melasma. So that's a tough one, right? I don't really know of many other options for sebaceous hyperplasia, but I will tell, I did give the advice that no, I would not treat that sebaceous hyperplasia due to the fact that it will become darker. It becomes super dark red. So the client 
will have this dark, dark spot for a very, very long time. And I'll let you know of a scenario soon of what it will look like. Okay, so, but we do treat flat hyperpigmentation. Jen Mansfield is a very talented skin classic provider, and she treated these hands, these brown spots. So when we're looking at brown spots with our derm light, they are actually brown. And I will show you, that's a brown spot. There's no red in there. It's brown. So with our derm light, we will evaluate brown spots to make sure they're not like this one because this one simply will not go away. And you would be exchanging money with a client and your procedure not working. So I know it doesn't work on these types of spots. We have that very well detailed in our manual. But when you're looking at brown spots, like from there to there, you're going to see brown under your derm light. These spots, what do you think of these? Now, I don't know. Oh, let me get myself. So when you look at these spots, um, I think these spots were lasered at a laser clinic. So these are not um, Skin Classic procedures done. But look how red they are. They're super red. I think what I'll do is let me... It's just so you can see it a little bit better. But look on the left side at those spots. I can tell a mile away, they have a lot of redness in there. I have no business even treating them with my device. Now, I may um, give some other solutions. Maybe the laser studio down the, down the road could take care of these. This lady did not have melasma, but she did have sun damage like I have this one. Lots of people have a lot of those. So um, be able to either, we'll talk about the, the um, procedures like peels or product, things like that, that will help your client. Um, this is what, if you look at melasma through the derm light, you saw what those brown spots looked like. This is what it looks like under the derm light. Let's see if I can. Yeah. So it's diffused and it's all throughout the skin. There are red angles, but it won't be a spot. So you've got to, when you're treating hyperpigmentation, it's got to be smaller than the size of an eraser head. And this is what melasma will look like under your derm light. It's pretty dramatic. I really can't wait until you get a client with melasma to look at it and snap a photo of it. Here again, it is reddish, it's diffused, but they're not brown spots. So the more you train your eye to look at these, the better you can serve your clients that have melasma. Um, would what did um, would melasma also look red with a skin of color? So that is a really really great question because I'm not sure about clients' um, skin of color and melasma. So that's a I didn't even think of that, and I've not seen it. So. I will investigate that one and get that info in the group later today. But it's all about the melanocytes. So, um, and Dr. Chasen does go into a little bit about the melanocytes in the first video. But I will, I will see about that. Thanks for bringing that one to my attention. And let's see here. So this is what it will look like. So it's very clear cut what you expect to see with melasma. See how reddish it is? It's not as brown as you think under the derm light. So be sure that you get those derm lights out and really look the hardest. Now, we have a client here that is, of course, you could see on the left. I hope that if you really weren't knowing about melasma too much, you can see this now and really recognize that this client on the left has melasma. But if you're going to drag out that woods lamp, go ahead and take a great picture with your woods lamp and you will see it very clear. 
But let me just be clear about this. Say she had three or four cherry angiomas on her forehead, not in this area here, I still would not do any of the cherry angioma treatment. Remember, do not use it, period, on those clients. And when you look through the derm light, you will see that there is not a brown spot there. You're seeing the redness in the skin and it's very diffuse. So if it was a brown spot you were treating, you need to have the picture of that brown spot about four slides above us. So um, very, very, um, oh, you have an Asian client with this mercy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's very common. And let me get here. Again, the Woods Lamp is a, a nice tool for those that, that have them in your office. Utilize them. Break them out because I know a lot of people aren't using them like they used to. But there is a lot of melasma out there. And even say you're watching, you don't have a skin classic, you don't have an IPL. It's super important to make sure that you educate your client on the melasma because you'll want them to be on good product for one thing but also warn them that they should not have any heat related treatments because how they might go to um, another practitioner and have an IPL treatment. You heard Dr. Chasen say this, that if they get treated thinking it was a sunspot or a brown spot or anything, it could make it much worse. So, you want to be able to be that provider that explains their condition, what are some things that they can do for it, and more importantly, let them know what they should not do for it. So in the future, if they go to another practitioner, they can be well equipped. And of course, like that, that there too. Now, if doesn't look super red, but I'm sure that under the derm light, you would see some of those characteristics that you saw in the slides above. Um, yeah, yeah, Brenda, I think a woods lamp would be beneficial. Um, I, I use my derm light, but um, definitely anything you have in your arsenal that will help you detect something and or document it for your client because if you've been in the treatment room with a melasma client, they are desperate. They really want treatment. And I'm guilty. Uh, many years ago, one of my Skin Classic providers now was a client of mine. She begged me, please just do this little spot up here and let's see. So I said, okay, I'll just do this little spot, but I really don't think it's going to help. And I was, wasn't was that new, but... Um, I did it for her. Oh, it looked horrible for months. But eventually it got back to the same brownness that she had. So it turned out to be a no harm, no foul. But if I had treated all of those spots she really wanted treated, it would have been a disaster. So anytime you see uneven brownness in the skin, hit the skids and look with your derm light take a good full look at your client before you treat them with any heat related treatments and so a patient with post acne scar with melasma can we do micro channeling absolutely that would be a great one now remember um in dr chasen's slide they were doing microneedling with um with the acid too but yes you can definitely um use the uh microneedling that's an awesome procedure and you'll see in the slides to come um one of the procedures that is recommended so let's see what happens if you treat someone with melasma Okay, so this one's in our manual too. Now, these nice clients were treated because the practitioner thought they just had some hyperpigmentation. But if you look closely, um, there's not a before picture. I, I, I'll, I'll pop them up in the group, but we do have some others that you're going to see. But these clients were very upset because 
not only was it very dark red, it stayed dark red for months. There's not a lot you can do about making this quicker for them either. It's tincture of time. And okay, some good products, maybe some um, red LED, but not infrared LED. You want to make sure that it's like, um, like the Illuminate has the one wavelength in it, doesn't have the, um, the um, infrared. That infrared can maybe heat up the skin to where this uh, 660 will not, even though it might feel a little warm, it's not a heat producing LED. So clients can be safely under that. But I, I hesitate. Um, I sell the Omnilux, which also has a little um, infrared in there too. It's red and infrared. And I don't sell them to my melasma clients because I feel like that's too much heat generated and can aggravate their uh, melasma. If anybody has any thoughts on that as well, put them in the chat box for me because um, I might learn something from someone here that might be um, an LED aficionado. So let's go on to the next one. So this could have been avoided and see how dark red that was and look at her cheeks and then look over top of her lip. Now it's not, it's something that you can cover for a while, but who really wants to go there, right? So the best way to not do it is to not entertain a melasma client. Here we have some clients and we've had these questions in our group. Oh, uh, could I treat this cyst on my client? Clearly the client has melasma. Can you see how there are some swaths of brown? A little over the lip, a little on the chin area, a little uh, by here and even in this area. So she is not a good fit for the heat that the Skin Classic would produce to alleviate that acne cyst work on, you know, use something else, maybe a lancet. The nice lady next to her wanted to have some of these sunspots gone. And if you look closely, I can see the brown spots very clearly. They're very delineated. And I also see the melasma closer to her nose. See that big swath? So when I see that big swath, that's all I have to see before I say, whoa, put the brakes on and, hmm, let me take a look. I, I take a look, even though I know I'm not going to treat that client, I might take a picture with my derm light. Take it a step further. If you take a picture with the derm light, have these other pictures on hand and let your client know that if we treat your melasma, even though it's not that one area, see these spots? They will look like those spots after treatment. It's super important. And it's an easy way to say no, because once they see those pictures, they're going to be like, oh, gosh, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Here is a client that had um, melasma, clearly. And this is the other side. So I had the before picture, but this is how red it was for months that, was, um, that it was treated. So you can see how red it was. Eventually, it turned back to um, the same color, but it took about, I think, four months. Um, you know, Sonia, I'm not sure I would ask um, the Saluma people because I'm not quite sure what their wavelengths are in there or if they have a contraindication for melasma. That's me. I know that some of the um, red spas that people go to, I always suggest if they have melasma that they cover their face because of the infrared wavelength that's in there, um, which can overheat and heat is what will aggravate the melasma it doesn't cause it but it can certainly aggravate it okay so here's a good example of very vague um melasma so this is one of our um, skin classic providers and i did her training and upon training i didn't treat her because she had melasma I didn't do anything on her. And during another treatment down the road, uh, her partner that was treating said she was just going to treat a couple sunspots or something like that. Um, and 
so you can see, I can see she's got her melasma in her temple region, a little under her, her eye and some under her right eye. So my eye is trained to pick up on swathy brown. Hers isn't super obvious because she's an esthetician and she's using products for this. So um, it was a little unclear why the treatment actually occurred, but let me show you how it looked. So here are the crust. You know, the crust was forming on the skin, which when we treat um, hyperpigmentation, like on the hands, you always see the crust. But here that crust was way too large of a crust that I would treat. I never treat anything larger than the size of an eraser head. And of course, I wanted to be more careful. So this is what can happen. So I want you to really, really evaluate your client's skin. And if you're saying to yourself, I don't like the looks of that, that scares me. Well, that's fine. Let it scare you. Let it scare you enough. Let me make sure my pictures are up. Um, let it scare you enough that you might say, mm, I'm going to really take pause on this one. If I can't tell it's melasma, I just won't do those flat brown spots. Uh, so don't do it. Uh, there's so many other things to treat with your skin classic. This is something that if it scares you, don't treat it. Okay, she's got her crust. When her crust came off, um, or that the, the outside picture was why it was still healing. And the middle picture is when all the crusts came off. Now, I'm going to switch this up. So we're going from there to there, right? Look at that. Look, okay, so it's so red. And of course, we were all upset that this happened. And, um, but there's a happy ending. Um, the other side was treated, right? There wasn't much on this side, and that's what she treated there. Even her nose, even the brown spot on her nose was melasma. So we don't, we don't want to treat it. Look how red it got. And if you look at the picture, it is a little hard to decipher. But again, it's because her melasma was under control, like it gets in this in the um, winter time, and gets very obvious in the summer. So she wound up doing Fraxel laser for what she called the scars, but they're completely gone. She does not have any issues and she does have two more sessions, but she took a break and just doing chemical peels. So for now, she's um, the, the Fraxel was um, expensive uh, and she was impressed with the Fraxel. So she's fine at this point, but it took months. And if this was your client that, that showed you, sent you pictures like this, you would be probably devastated. So um, important, make sure that you're looking at your clients with hyperpigmentation through a different lens. Um, this is a great article. When you get the slideshow, you'll get the link on how microneedling is really great for melasma. You'll get the, the study on it. You'll get how they did, um, I think, 22 people and how um, great they all came. So microneedling, and I think they did it at a depth of 1.5. And I know not everybody's doing that, but that was this particular article. So this article is included in this slideshow which I think you'll you'll like, I know you'll like. So like within our realm, we can do chemical peels. We can do light-based procedures that, that are just for melasma. And there are a few out there. I know Pico, uh, they're touting that they use that for melasma, but um, they're backing that up, like backing up their steps. And some people say no. So if you are sending someone that does um, laser for it, just investigate which laser they're using. And of course, microneedling is a great procedure for it. Read that article. Many of you do microneedling, microchanneling, whatever you want to call it. There are a lot of products that help with melasma. So you may use these in tandem. This is in part of the slideshow. So if your products that you're going to use has some of these, then you know that they're going to be beneficial for uh, the treatment of your client's melasma. Of of course, the derm light is something that I tout 
all the time. I think it's something that you can really see the melasma in the skin. And of course, you can always snap your pictures and upload those to our group. I would love to see them and um, see that you're able to use your phone to do that. If you guys do need a derm light, I sell them. They're in my store. If you're getting this link, if you're getting the slideshow, you can just click on the picture and you can get it in four payments of $75. But it's crucial, or like I said, you might have a woods lamp, and that's beneficial as well. And oops. So you know that this is a real quick no for me. I don't want anybody using the Skin Classic for the melasma. Follow me on TikTok if you do want to see that video. So um, I really appreciate your time today watching and um, hopefully we learned. Um, it's a very good dependable product in your practice. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mercy. It is. I love it. And um, you're very welcome. I hope that helps because I know it, it is hard to decipher. So we saw some melasma that was like cut and dry. You could see it a mile away. But then you can see how how vague it can be. So remember, when treating hyperpigmentation, always pause when you see smudges on the skin or anything like that. Break out your derm light, make sure you use it, and know that there are some other treatments available. Um, I, I hope you all liked the slideshow and uh, you make sure you get the word melasma in the comments and we'll get you this slideshow so you can share it with your clients look at the pictures again uh the videos the the links for the microneedling um way to go about it and of course dr chasen's introduction that i thought was really really great and his procedure that he does very successfully for melasma so um, have a great Monday, everyone. I'll see you next week as well. And if anything comes up, you just let me know. I'll see you all in our group. Hey, Sandra, nice to see you. And Brianna, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching.